After punching the holes in the saw plate, I needed to reseat the back and uh, being careful not to drive it all the way down tight onto the back. I, you leave a little bit of a space at the top. And the plate looks to be still straight. I did have an issue when I first assembled this, and I've had it apart four or five times now, but um, there was just a little bit of a twist in the back. And keep in mind that I folded this from a piece of angle and uh, it was twisted and in pretty bad shape when I got it folded. Um, I took it to a piece of railroad iron with a dead blow hammer and, and beat it into submission and it turned out remarkably well, but I had to take a couple pair of uh, uh, crescent wrenches, clamp part of this in my rubber jaws on my machinist vise, and then just gave it a little, just the tiniest little bit of a twist and that took the uh, the wave out of the back part here and now it looks really good so um, I don't know if you can do that with a brass back this is the first saw I've ever tried to adjust so um, I was really surprised that it came out the way it did I figured it would take about 50 tries and I'd end up making it worse but uh, it tweaked right into position and hasn't been a problem I downloaded a tooth pattern from Blackburn Tools website and it's nothing more than lines on a piece of paper. Uh, this one is spaced for 15 points per inch. I uh, just folded it over the edge of the saw and taped it on with masking tape. From here it's just a matter of taking a saw file and lining it up with each mark on the guide and making a small notch in the edge of the blade. You may notice that I'm not holding the file level as I mark these teeth. Uh, during sharpening, it, that becomes much more important. It's a little difficult to see here, but I filed the first inch of teeth with 30 degrees rake, and the second inch of teeth have about 20 degrees rake. I'll file the remaining teeth with 0 degrees rake, and this will give me an overall progressive rake, which will make starting the saw much easier. I'm shaping about an inch worth of teeth at a time, and I just make a couple of passes on each one, uh, go the full inch, and then I'll come back and go over it again and gradually uh, sneak up on it. Um, that way, if I need to make fine adjustments to the size of a particular tooth that's not coming out right, I can put more pressure at the front or the back and work my way through them, trying to get nice, even teeth. After the teeth were shaped, it was time to add set. Uh, the first thing I did was take a marker and I marked every other tooth on the saw plate so that I wouldn't get confused and uh, set one of the teeth the wrong direction. Um, once I complete the set of half the teeth, I went ahead and marked the other half, uh, flipped the plate around in the vise, and then set those teeth. With the teeth set, it was time to go ahead and joint the saw. Um, I worked until I could see a small flat at the top of each tooth and uh, then it's time to go on to the final sharpening. In order to be able to see what I'm doing, I went ahead and ran a marker over the teeth which would leave a black mark on all the flats and as you sharpen, when that black disappears, you stop. My saw bolts actually turned out halfway decent. Uh, made them out of just mild steel, some half inch rod that I had. Um, I thought since I made a steel back on the blade, I'd go ahead and use steel on the nuts to make a match. Um, I've got the, the length plenty long. I'll have to cut quite a bit off after I get them set. But I did get a square shoulder on them, and I'll have to chisel out for that square uh, to fit into my handle. And and it's a you know it's a pretty good size one. Um, I think it's about uh, what was it? A little over a quarter inch, not well. I guess it's not quite a quarter inch on the square. Before the final assembly on the saw, I went ahead and used some spray lacquer to coat the back and the bolts and nuts to uh, stave off rust. Well, once the saw was finished, I felt like I needed to do some test cuts with it and uh, see how it tracked and see how well it cut. Um, it doesn't cut as well as, uh, let's say, my Lee Nielsen dovetail saw, but I'm still new to sharpening, and uh, I think I can improve on that as I get a little more practice. 
Uh, I've got a couple more saws in the works that I'll be working on, and then uh, I may come back to this one and, and uh, apply what I've learned there and see if I can improve on it a little bit. But overall, it uh, it does a pretty good job. I've cut a few dovetails with it, so I'll I'll call this project a, a success. Well, that pretty much wraps up the dovetail saw. I uh, realize I didn't get into any detail on making the saw bolts or uh, how I folded the back, so I'll try and do some videos on those shortly. Um, also, check below in the description. I'll put some links. Um, for related materials. Uh, one of those will be uh, a video by Andy Lovelock on YouTube that uh, is really an excellent video on sharpening and, and that's one of the reasons I didn't go into any detail on sharpening because there's no point in me trying to recreate that wheel. Uh, he did an excellent job so be sure and check that out. So until next time, thanks for watching.